to, you don't know if you don't go. But today we're going to take a look at your tackle box. So Randy, could you take a look at my tackle box and uh, see whether I've got everything I need for the next time we go out for walleye? Yeah. Sure, Lauren. Be happy to. Okay, folks, uh, here we go with the personal stash. You ready? Just come over here and take a, take a look inside here and see what the man's got laid out. Well, guess what? I have one question. When you need to change something quickly regarding walleyes, where do you go? This looks like, where is it? Where is it? Okay, so to keep this short, I'll basically tell you, you need to get organized here. Okay, there is, Sounds nowhere, good. There is nowhere you can go that's gonna get you back in the water quick. Okay, so come over here and take a good picture of this. I mean, get, get right up and close and look in here and see how you got these reels and all this stuff and everything. Okay, I'm sorry to be critical of your box, but That's all right. if you're on the water and you're on a bite and you're on a pot of feeding fish, this is what you don't want to see. What you want to see is something that gets you back in the water quickly as possible and efficiently as possible. So why don't we shut down and I'll show you what my box looks like. What is the first thing that you notice that's readily accessible with this box. The pliers. Very good. Now, folks, the reason why I made mention of that is that the one thing you don't want to spend any time looking for is the hook remover. It's one of the things you're going to want to get the hook out of the fish, get the fish in the live well or back in the water, and get back in the water as soon as possible. Having this handy is one of the key things. Okay? Oops, sorry about that. Okay. okay, folks, now the first thing you want to really think about is layering your box. First things first, what do I need to get me back in the water the fastest for walleye? First things first, okay? That would be a walleye tray, okay? In it is everything you've ever needed to get back in the water for your presentation for walleye. In other words, keep yourself a walleye box, keep it ready, keep it accessible, keep it quick. Okay? Mine has not been set up for this. This is how I fish it. There is a Malax slider from Phil. There's a night bobber in case we're going to do some of that. Sorry, it just came apart. This one for the Lindy rig, the advanced uh, double barrel. We got some of these other ones for uh, your traditional Lindy Walker. Got your bobber materials, some split shot, some floats, worm blower. Guys that go long line and use these. Okay. Your beads, hooks, spinners, different color hooks, different color beads, swivels, eye buster. Nippers. Okay. Knife, if you want to use so. And, okay, bottom finders. That sort of thing. The point is, everything that you're going to use to set up a walleye rig for a search pattern or for bobber fishing, have it right there so you can rig up, nip, cut put you some more line that's maybe sitting in the boat, have it ready, have it in the walleye box. What are these clips used for? Clips? Yep. What clips? These, these clips here. These? Okay. Uh, well, walleye guys are going to know that's a depth finder. When you're talking walleyes, the first search pattern is going to be in the bottom, and this helps you find the bottom and adjust your depth so you can put your bait in front of the fish. Better chance of uh, getting a bite if they can see your bait, see it moving. Okay, it's for uh, it's for your bobber fishing. All right, without that, you're guessing, or you're going to have to tie some weights on and do it the hard way. This just simply clips on your hook, you drop it down to the bottom, tells you where the bottom is, and you adjust your knot 
so that your bobber rides at a certain depth. You pick your depth, whether it's six inches or two feet, or even higher in the water column, but your knot helps your slip bobber, which is this, your Mille Lac slider, or even bigger, this one's kind of small, helps you uh, adjust your depth so that you can get your bait in front of the fish. But everything you need to do that, whether it's bobber fishing or whether you're lindy rigging, you want it all in one box so that you can go in the box, re-rig yourself up, get back in the water as quick as possible without spending time going, oh, man, I know it's in there. Dark on it, I know it. Well, who's been in my box? Okay, keep it in here, keep it organized, and keep it readily, readily accessible. Okay. All right, for those of you people that uh, don't believe in buying bait, and trust me, a lot of the pros are, are not using live bait much. Some of these competitions don't allow any live bait. You get your gulp and different varieties and whatnot, throw it in a pouch, keep it out of the sun. They keep for a long time. Even after they've been opened? Even after they've been opened. It's a uh, Ziploc, resealable. Uh, let's take a look and see what kind of gulp lures you got in there. Oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, let's see, there's a smelt from three, four years ago. There's a four inch black worm. There's a Mr. Twister. Here's uh, uh, another minnow, I think that's watermelon. Something like that. That's pretty much what I use. I got some worms in there, orange and black, stuff like that. So it's things that you can throw at bass or put on a Lindy rig and uh, do well with. And they work pretty good for crappies, too. So, that's my box. All right, thanks, Randy. Well, folks, that was your tackle box. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on If You Don't Know If You Don't Go.